So today I'm going to talk about my first album and my first experience in the music business. So let's take a look. Um, when I was 16 years old, I decided I wanted a recording contract, but I only wanted it with Mike Varney and Shrapnel Records. If it was going to be any other way, I didn't want it, and I didn't even want to be in the business. Um, if you're familiar with Varney and Shrapnel Records, you'll understand my reasoning, and I still hold true um, to that decision. After nearly four years of sending demo tapes to uh, Shrapnel Records, I gave up because they never replied to any of them. And soon after I gave up, I got a call um, from Mike Varney, and he basically said, keep the demo tapes coming. I think you're starting to get somewhere. I thought that was a prank phone call. So um, I started calling all my friends to see if they, if they did that, and nobody did. Oh, let's see, what, what next? When Shrapnel Records signed me, Mike Varney asked me who my favorite guitar player on his record label was. And I said, well, currently it's Tony Fredinelli. And he replied saying, I was thinking of having Tony work with you on a record. And um, I'll be damned. Uh, I was in disbelief. So... Let's fast forward. Tony picked me up from the airport, and he was the coolest person and best musician I had ever met. He was my guitar hero. Um, how often does your favorite guitarist in the world pick you up and grab your guitars and luggage with you at an airport? It, it still blows my mind. Um, Tony produced my album and was very, very strict. And I was in a state of perpetual anxiety. My hands were shaking um, when the recording light went on. But he and the engineer, Brett Hansen, managed to um, calm me down and said things like, Relax. Um, if Mike Varney didn't like your music, you would not be here. So, um, Ray Luzier was the hired session drummer and he was so incredible I kept thinking oh, this should be his album and I should just be his guitar player um, and look at what Ray has done in the years since then he became and is one of the greatest drummers of our generation he became a rock star and well I, dis I, I disappeared into obscurity for a little while uh, the, a negative backlash is I didn't get to see the internet until the late 90s. And like an idiot, I googled my name and the results were not very nice. Uh, I found at least three websites which were Toby Knapp guitarist anti-websites. Where to quote one of them, because it stuck with me, was we are here to inform the world of the greatest guitarists and the worst guitarist, Toby Knapp. Uh, that's the quote. Well, that stuck with me, too. Um, but I think I've had a pretty good run. And the, the thing is, is I'm still very, very inspired. And I'm still doing what I'm doing. And I'm a relatively happy person. So, sorry.